Let us learn how to see by first learning the anatomy of the eye. Now let's go over the membrane of the eye first. The sclera, the outermost layer of the eye, containing collagen and elastic fiber. The choroid is a vascular layer of the eye. Retina, which contains the photoreceptors for us to see. Around here, we have the conjunctiva, which helps lubricate the eyes. And here is the cornea, which forms a window letting light into the, into the eye. It, together with the lens, is the major part of light refraction, bending the light as it goes inside the eye. The pupil is the main place which allows light to enter the retina. The iris, which controls the diameter and size of the pupils, here, as well as it's responsible for our distinct eye color. Then we got the liquids, the vitreous humor, which sits inside our eyes, and the aqueous humor around our pupil. They function to keep our eyes clean. Now, there are all these veins which here which will nourish the eye. And here is the optic nerve coming from the retina, which then sends info into the brain, telling us what we are actually seeing, forming an image. So, now that we know the basic anatomy of the eye, let us try to comprehend the physiology of vision and how we see. To do this, I'll draw this young lad who is over here, yep, who is looking straight ahead at this ball over here. And he can see this ball clearly because the light coming from the sun or whatnot bounces off this object as photons. And these photons then travel to his eyes, allowing him to see the ball. So this image, this, this will create a sharp image because he's looking straight at it, right? However, this ball down here also bounces some light off it into his eyes. But the lad, the young boy, can't see this ball and only sees it as a blurry object because his eyes is focused as elsewhere in a different direction. So again, we see, we see objects because light bounces off of them. That is why when it is dark, we can't see anything, because there is no light to bounce off the objects. So for example, this guy here can't see the ball without no light, because there's no light ref reflecting off of it. So let's have a closer look at how we see by zooming into his the eye. Actually, make it this eye, because this other guy is in the dark. So here is the eye. Light, as I mentioned, bounces off something and and some travels to the eyeball. Light doesn't just go through at some random angle, but refracts to the back of the retina, so it bends. It bends because of the lens present behind the pupil, which helps reflect, refract the light towards the back of the retina, towards the fovea usually. An interesting, okay, so an interesting point to make is the blind spot. We have a blind spot when an object emitting light bends towards the optic nerve where this red arrow is pointing. Now, got some cool now they got some cool blind spot stuff tricks on the internet that looks something like this. This one is not probably good because it's hand drawn and small. If you pause it, you can figure it out. So, back again to the vision physiology. Here we have the eye and the retina, which contains the photoreceptors and the fovea, where most light usually lands to. So light travels in and refracts because of the lens towards the retina or fovea at the back. The retina then sends this information to the brain, which the, the brain will then form an image. So again, we've got the light, retina, nerve fibers, and the image. There are two main types of photoreceptors in the retina. There are the rods and the cones. Now the difference between them is that the rods are cells which receive white and black colors. They interpret it as white and black colors. They are also the, mo the more sensitive receptors. While the cones, this chunky looking thing, are the color cells. They receive the colors and they interpret, it, interpret the colors. Now let's zoom, zoom into the back of this eye and see how light proceeds through and yeah, it forms an image. So here we have light going in this direction and here we have 
some optic nerves. We got the choroid, which is the outer layer of the eye. There is pigmented epithel epithelium, which essentially nourishes the cones and rods. We got the blind spot we mentioned earlier, where there these nerves come in from the optic nerve. And then we got the fovea, where there is many receptor cones. Cones are the sensitive color ones. Now below the pigmented epithelial are the rods and cones. The cones are the more bul bulky looking ones, as you can tell. Then connected to the rod and cones is another specialized cell called bi bipolar cells, which processes the information from the photoreceptors to the ganglion cells, which forms the optic nerve and sends the information to the brain to process as an image. Then you also have these random horizontal cells, which help relay signal between photoreceptors, you can say. So if we zoom again onto this section and see the process of vision again, step by step. Now it is important to know that in the retina there are more rods than cones. This is because black and white are more important. Think about it. So here again we have the pigmented epithelium, the rods and cones. So the rods and cones are the first one to receive the light. The rods and cones receive the light and then passes it onto the bipolar cells. Here are the bipolar cells, which then relays the signal to the ganglion cells, which then forms the optic nerve. Light travels this way and stimulates the photoreceptors, the rods and cones, which form the receptor field. Then they will send these signals to the bipolar, then the ganglion, then to the brain, basically to form an image. Now that was just an introduction of vision physiology. I hope you understood that. Any questions, just ask, I guess. Uh, yep, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. I hope to be posting more videos up soon. Thank you.